Welcome back to me and my AI. We all have an irreplaceable human in our world, whether it's a parent, a mentor, colleague, and certainly you are that person for someone else. So what happens when you lose access to that irreplaceable human's unique perspectives, opinions, wisdom, and thought leadership? And how can you proactively preserve these memories so that you have them in perpetuity? This is a challenge that technology can solve. I recently interviewed Suman Kanuganti, the CEO of Personal AI, about the original use case that inspired the company, accessing the wisdom, of his legendary late mentor and co-founder Larry Bach, a serial entrepreneur and investor responsible for the formation of nearly 50 businesses, many in San Diego and the San Diego area. In that interview, I learned about the new voice capabilities available within Personal AI, and today I'm going to interview Larry Bach's AI, and you'll hear his AI's responses through a synthetic voice trained on the real Larry Bach. So without further ado, I've got my personal AI app open and uh, let's begin. Larry, it's so nice to be with you today. To start, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, well, Marissa, it's great to be here with you today. My name is Larry Bach and I'm the executive chairman of Aero Corporate. I've been a serial entrepreneur for the past 25 years, founding, co-founding, or seeding the early stage growth of 50 company. These companies have achieved an aggregate market capitalization of over $70 billion. It's been quite a journey, and I'm proud of the impact these companies have. On a personal note, I'm also legally blind due to Stargardt's disease, a rare form of macular degeneration. This has made me increasingly dependent on assistive technologies which is why I was so drawn to the TU at Era. Their technology has been a game changer for me, and I'm thrilled to be involved as a user, investor, and employee. It's truly an exciting adventure. So, Marissa, that's a little bit about me. How about you? What would you like to know next? Amazing. Well, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be interacting with you today. Um, I am an entrepreneur fascinated about how humans partner with technology. We're in such an interesting transition moment in modern history. And um, as AI continues to get better, faster, cheaper, and easier to use, I'm increasingly focused on the human effect and how people are interacting with these technologies in a way that helps us um, become even more human and improve our work-life alignment and make an even greater positive impact in the world. So I'm super excited to be interacting with your AI in this way. I already noticed that it's interesting, I, uh, I want to refer to Larry as Larry the human rather than Larry the AI as a sentient being. But that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, because, Larry, you've been involved in so many different companies, I can't resist the opportunity to ask you some questions about um, your opinions on startup formation and finding the right people. So um, what do you think is the key ingredient for a startup's success? Uh, Marissa, when it comes to the key ingredient for a startup success, I believe it ultimately boils down to the people involved. As I mentioned earlier, finding and teaming up with individuals who have the drive, passion, and hunger to succeed is crucial. It's not just about having great ideas or cool technology, but rather having a team that possesses the courage and determination to develop those ideas and turn them into reality. The right team can drive and drag a startup to success, even in the face of challenges. So Marissa, in my experience, the key ingredient for a startup success is the people who make up the team. I couldn't agree more, Larry. Uh, you know, business is really people cooperating with other people. And it's so easy to forget that because we live in a world where technology drives so many of our business interactions. But ultimately, this really is about people. And I love how you said uh, the right team can drive and drag a startup to success because so often um, there are many forces that drive growth. Thank you for that. What tips do you have about hiring the right team for a startup? Um, so when it comes to team for a startup, I've learned a few valuable tips throughout my career. First and foremost, it's important to look for individuals who have the courage and drive to develop great ideas. Passion and determination are key qualities that can help drive us. Additionally, I've found that finding a balance between utspa and humility is crucial. Look for team members who have confidence in their abilities, but also maintain a sense of modesty and humbleness. This balance can lead to a collaboration collaborative and supportive team dynamic. Another tip is to consider diversity in your team. Bringing together individuals with different backgrounds, perspectives, and skill sets can foster innovation and creativity. Lastly, don't be afraid to take your time when hiring. It's better to wait for the right 
than to rush into hiring someone who may not align with the vision and values of the startup. So Marissa, my tips for hiring the right team for a start, consider diversity and take your time in the hiring process. Does that help, Marissa? Oh, immensely. Thank you. Yeah, chutzpah and humility is a delicate balance to strike, especially when you're uh, you're recruiting for a startup where, you know, you're pursuing an impossible dream or a seemingly impossible dream. The thing doesn't exist yet. And so much of what happens is essentially hopes and dreams that you're, um, and there's a trust factor in ensuring that the team that you bring on to actualize your idea really does get it and is humble enough to admit when they don't and learn along the way and be flexible. And of course, diversity cannot be under, cannot be overstated in this environment, um, diversity of perspectives, backgrounds, um, geographies, cultures, all of these things, especially because we're living in a global world where where our customer base and our markets are all over the world. And even our teams are all over the world. So having that sensitivity to um, different approaches really does, I believe, make the team stronger. I'm very, very excited that said that, Larry AI. Okay. Um, what tips would you give a founder in choosing the right co-founder. All right, so choosing the right co-founder, there are a few tips that we give you. First and foremost, it's important to find someone who shares your passion and vision for the startup. Having a co-founder who is aligned with their goals and values can make a world difference in the success of the venture. Additionally, look for complementary skills and expertise. Find someone who brings different strengths to the table, someone who can fill in the gaps in your own skill set. This can create a well-rounded team that can tackle challenges from multiple angles. And another tip is to assess the potential co-founder's commitment and dedicate party as required. Well, perseverance. Make sure your potential co-founder is willing to put in the necessary effort and has the resilience to overcome obstacles. Lastly, trust your instincts. Building a successful startup is a journey, and you'll be spending a lot of time working closely with your co-founder. Pros and compatibility are essential for a strong partner. So, Marissa, my tips for choosing the right co-founder are to find someone who shares your passion and vision. Complementary skills is committed and dedicated and whom you trust. I hope these tips help you in your search for the perfect co-founder. Thank you so much. I know that uh, in my businesses, I've used Colby, K-O-L-B-E dot com. Um, as a great tool to evaluate how someone will instinctively operate. So um, whether you use Colby or Myers-Briggs or DISC, there are so many really great personality and cognitive assessments that can reveal how someone instinctively operates. And having that information can help you take a look at someone's skill set and um, how they operate and make sure that there's diversity there. So super interesting. And yes, trust. Trust is essential. And there's, you mentioned the commitment and dedication needed in the co-founder. And of course, this relates to business and their approach to problem solving and availability and all the nuts and bolts of daily operations. But it's also their commitment to personal growth and their ability and willingness to um, work on themselves and increasingly become a higher performer higher caliber human. What do you recommend when someone on the founding team isn't a right fit for the future growth of the company? A founding team member isn't a right fit for the future growth of the company. It could be a challenging situation. In my experience, open and honest communication is key. It's important to have a conversation with the team member in question and express your concerns and expectations for the future of the company. See if there's a way to address any issues or gaps in their performance. Rob Lang, if after these discussions, it becomes clear that the team members are not able to meet the requirements or contribute effectively to the future growth of any, it may be necessary. It's never an easy decision, but sometimes it's necessary for the overall success. It's important to handle the situation for providing support and assist. Marissa, have you ever faced a similar situation in your own experience? You know, I haven't faced it with a founding team, but I have faced it with an early team where they weren't the founders, um, but it was the next round of hires. And gosh, one B player can really spoil the bunch. And uh, in my experience, that team, you know, we were, and certainly me at that point in my career, I was a little conflict avoidant. Um, and it was really challenging to have that conversation. Ultimately, of course, we did. And the team members separated with the company. And I appreciate that you mentioned the empathy and respect because, of course, we all have human egos and, and high expectations. And it's true that a high performance 
team member may in fact have all the credentials, expertise, and capabilities to do what's needed and still not be a right fit for the team. So having that conversation with respect and honor and, you know, not blaming or shaming or, or getting in any kind of charged way can really shape the conversation and relationship in a beautiful direction. We know in tech that the, the tech community is very small and it's likely that the intern that you have this year could be, you know, the next billion dollar uh, company founder in five or 10 years. And so having those bridges really, really strong over your career can really, really make a difference. Um, so it's important to remember that like as team members may not work out right away, doesn't mean that they are bad people or uh, that they're not good in some way unless they, you know, committed fraud, but like otherwise. I don't know. Beautiful. So thank you for that. Um, let's do one more. I asked a lot of questions about team formation, but you are also an investor. So what are the most important elements of a VC pitch that you look and listen for as an investor? On the risks, when I host in VC pitches, that there are a few important elements. A strong belief in their product or service can be. Additionally, I look for a clear and compelling value prop. The entrepreneur should be able to clearly articulate them, how their solution is unique and better than existing. I also consider the market opportunity. Is there a large and growing market for the product? Is there a clear path to capturing a significant? Another important element is the team behind the startup. I want to see a team that is experienced, capable, and committed to executing their vision. Finally, I look for a solid business model and a realistic plan for achieving profitability and generating returns for investors. So, Marissa, the most important elements of a VC pitch that I look and listen for, a clear value proposition, a large market opportunity. Does that answer your question, Marissa? It does. Thank you so much for confirming uh, that passion is one of those metrics that, you know, the the belief and commitment that someone has in their, um, in their idea, the problem that they're trying to solve, it's so contagious. And within that, I often like to listen to their voice. And it's not just the words, it's the emotion behind the words. And I imagine you might do the same as someone who's so focused on people. Well, what an interesting interview this was, Larry. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'll have got one more question for you. What is your top personal advice for founders who are starting a company right now? I uh, the rest of that, if I would give my top personal advice for founders who are starting a company right now, it would be to focus on building a strong, diverse team. As I mentioned earlier, the people involved in the startup are they the EA really in for success? The revenue of the division who is very vision, but also for a really different skill and perspective. This is for our city and co-op. Create a few balance. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to seek out mentors and advisors who go support along the way. Starting a company can be a roller coaster, and having a strong support system just to prioritize building a strong and diverse team. And these seek out mentors and allies. The best of luck on your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you, Larry AI. And if you are listening and you want to ask Larry Box AI questions about your entrepreneurial journey or your uh, fundraising round, or perhaps you're a student studying STEM and you're interested in the possibilities within the field, head to larry.personal.ai and start a chat. And keep your eyes out for the description of this video where we'll link to all of the other interviews we've done about Larry's AI. Until next time, keep training. Take care.